This is what makes it fun to be a geologist. I'm standing on some of the most dynamic landscapes here on planet Earth. Active volcanism here in Iceland. All around me are the manifestations of volcanoes at their most primeval and dynamic scale. You see boiling mud pots in front of us with the grays of silica being deposited. They look like holes into the Earth. And then right over there, the green waters of a boiling mud pool. Their beautiful colors, their telltale signatures that would then become recorded in the rocks. You can see the energy of the bubbling from the gases from within the Earth under pressure coming up to the surface. The gray is the silica, the green are the sulfurs. And then over here, we have a steaming chimney, also known as a fumarole, where we have got the gases from deep within the Earth from a volcano producing precipitates, the silica, sulfur, and other, and other compounds right on the surface. This is a little mini ecology. Some of the colors reflect colonies of microbes that live in these systems. You can feel the hot gases coming out from within the Earth. And in these boiling mud pots, these fumaroles, these sulfataras, is the energy of geology and life come together. As you can see all around me, the steam is bubbling from the ground. I can smell the waft of sulfur. I can see the mineral deposits, colors of greens, grays, blues, yellows. These kind of minerals are the telltale signals of these kind of hydrothermal systems. And as we explore these on Earth here in Iceland, we're looking for their record on the planet Mars. We think they must have been there. Where are they today? Are they all buried in the past? Look at this. Inside this simple little volcano, we have all the ingredients of life. We have minerals, hot, woo, very hot air, um, venting, uh, mineral deposits that we could potentially detect from rovers and maybe someday even from the orbit as we explore Mars. So here on Earth, we're using the power of the analogy to understand the planet Mars in an active volcanoscape. Over here, we can see what happens when the water and the energy from within the, within the Earth produces a whole, a whole forest of mini volcanoes. You can see some of the beautiful colors of the minerals that are deposited, like travertine. You can see sulfur deposits, the grays of silica, the reds of iron oxides. These are the things we're going to be exploring for on Mars at the rock scale. And if we find them, Eureka, we'll have signatures of these kind of environments on another world. Maybe, or just maybe, the record of these kind of places, like we see here in Iceland, are buried in the Martian past. And if we find them, we'll know that's a great place to look for the clues to what makes Mars work, how it's like or dislike Earth, and even whether Mars ever had life. And this is unbelievable. Here in this volcanoscape world of Iceland, we have a huge colony of life forms, a microbial world in its own right. Look at this stuff. Thanks to the action of water and warmth, these slimy oozes are a full microbial world. Volcanoes, water, energy, nutrients, sulfur, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. There it is. It's a cradle of life. So now we have to find this stuff on Mars. One of the problems on Mars is these things are so fragile, they don't last very long. So preserving them in a long record, you know, in another world, even here on Earth, is tough. So you got to see them when they happen or have them get unburied so you can find them again. It's the hard part. They don't make it easy. This is soft stuff, you know? It's easy to find a hard rock. Here's one that's been oxidized with hematite. But finding the soft rocks, it's why, it's why our game isn't easy. But that's why we have the rovers. If we ever found these kind of things preserved as minerals, I think a lot of us would uh, retire happy. Anyway, what a great place.